Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're all doing well in these crazy times, and uh, I'm glad we can still do some so, some form of Geometics Day uh, in this digital way. Today, I would like to talk to you about 3D in a landscape of 2D registrations. My name is Fanny Strayer, and I work as a software uh, advisor at Sweco. At Sweco, we are focused on uh, designing the cities and communities of the future. And as a GIS department of Sweco, we focus on the digitalization of these cities and communities. And work, we work on providing data so that uh, analysis can be done on these things. And there's a number of software packages that we develop as a GIS department. And here you see some examples. One is a GeoWeb that we've developed together with ESRI, which is a GIS uh, package. And another example is of Observe. Uh, which is focused on uh, the maintenance of different types of objects that are outside uh, that uh, are in responsibility of uh, municipalities such as trees and roads and playgrounds, etc. Move, move 3 is our uh, geodetic package, which is focused on uh, geodetic computations. And I work for DG Dialog BGT which is focused on the BGT or the base registration map of the Netherlands. In our software, this is what the BGT looks like, uh, specifically the surroundings of the Faculty of Architecture, uh, as you all are, are all familiar with. Um, and as you can see here, the BGT is really focused on, um, well, digitizing all objects that are larger than 30 centimeters. And together, uh, that forms a complete base map of the landscape of the Netherlands. It's all basically flat, even though all to, uh, topologically correct, but most of the focus of the BGT has been on forming a complete uh, 2D map. But more and more users uh, are starting to see uh, a lot of um, uh, good reasons to uh, form this 3D or use more 3D information. A good example are the water boards, uh, who are very uh, interested in uh, 3D, specifically height differences, so they can analyze the water flow through the surroundings. So for them, we're already uh, registering the BGT in 3D. Specifically, what we can do within DigiDialog BGT for this uh, base registration is to provide the collection, the storage, and mutation and usage of this data, and it all goes through a cycle constantly. Um, and within this collection, we have a lot of interesting options uh, to provide for uh, well, very reliable data. Uh, for example, we have very direct connections with uh, different uh, GPS and uh, geodetic uh, collection methods. And we also have direct couplings with photochromatic packages. Also, through a direct coupling with StreetSmart, we can collect in 3D also um, from panoramic images and also from point clouds that are uh, behind that. And we are working on couplings with uh, point cloud software. All of these collection methods are focused on getting 3D measurements. But most of our customers are throwing away the height information because the BGT is up until now mostly focused on 2D data. Uh, and a lot of our direct uh, users or the people who are uh, responsible for uh, the mutations in the BGT don't see a direct use for this 3D information. But more and more of our customers and more and more of specifically the users of the BGT see a lot of reasons to start collecting 3D and also start registering this 3D data. So this is something we've been working on. Um, to find ways to uh, use this really reliable 2D data to form it into 3D. Of course, there's a lot of ways to already do that. But most of the uh, 3D models that are now available are either a lot of handwork or a lot of generalization. But since we have access to a lot of reliable 3D data, we want uh, to, com to comprise a method in which we can form that together into reliable 3D uh, data. Well, you all know this, uh, this overview of different LODs in which we can uh, draw. 
And basically, uh, LOD 0 0.3 is something we already have in the BGT. And looking from that, what we think we can do is create LOD 2.2 uh, within DG Dialog BGT, so within our own base registration software, so that our users can actually um, use this data, which is reliable and correct. Because it's not about making nice images, as you all know, it's about uh, generating correct <laughs> and complete data. Um, our first solution was to use the AHN, or the height map of the Netherlands. Uh, to enrich the data we already had. You see here some data that was collected in 3D or all the vertices for uh, all the, the polygons you see here, they were uh, collected in 3D. And in order to give the terrain a little more height and a little more uh, life and likeliness to the real situation, we use AHN to improve this. And you see here a visualization in 3D from our own software. But there's much more that can be done than just uh, doing this two and a half D thing. So we started talking with a 3D geo information group from the TU Delft, um, specifically people who have worked on 3D Fire, to see if we can use uh, the techniques behind 3D Fire to enrich our own data as well. Together, we've worked on more solutions that are also based on 3D Fire. Um, we tried focusing on buildings then, and specifically for buildings, we came up with a solution uh, that could help us uh, map these 3D buildings and make them more reliable with more interesting and complex roof shapes. So we've come up with a whole lot of buildings um, and a whole lot of building types that we could think of and see if these types of lines that we wanted to use uh, would be enough to create this. Our conclusion was that what we need for buildings is the building footprints, which are already in the BGT, building contours from the Bach, which is uh, which actually shows the top of each building or the uh, bird's eye view. We also want to map ridge lines, which can be measured with a lot of measurement devices, and specifically high jumps, so that we don't have to draw in vertical walls, but we can tell our software to uh, Folks that it. Also, slant lines is something we wanted to uh, incorporate. Um, from some of our customers, we got city GML uh, 3D models that they already had. Uh, and using FME, uh, we tried to combine that and we uh, actually analyzed the, the city GML model for these types of lines we wanted to find. And then these types of lines we would import into our own software. Um, some results that we've gained so far is uh, first some uh, separate drawings of different types of roof types that we could come up with, like you can see here. These are screenshots from our software um, for the 2D data and the 3D results. And these were our first building results we were really, really happy with already. An example you see here is uh, a building in The Hague. And from the city GML model and the, the uh, theory I just explained to you, this is the model that we could get. You can see it's still not fully complete, but it's already a lot more precise than uh, what we had seen before that. Um, this is another example of an interesting building. Um, and what you see here is the result from this analysis from city GML. We also uh, created a way to draw all these lines in our own software and then make 3D buildings out of it. So directly using the BGT as we're already regist uh, registering it. So when we use that, uh, this is what the result becomes. So there's a lot more uh, precise data in that. And there's a lot more detail that we can incorporate. And uh, specifically for our end users, these type of things can be really, really interesting because as you can see, here, the uh, ground surface of the building is much smaller than it was in the city GML uh, 3D model because it's usually based on the Bach, so the uh, outlines of the buildings. But focusing on the BGT, we really need also the, uh, the way it is in the landscape. So we need to create complete, correct 3D, as you can see, 
here. Some first results of some bigger areas you can see here. This is part of The Hague, uh, close to the uh, Holland Spoor train station. Um, the, the landscape around the buildings is quite flat, but I can promise you it's still in 3D, what you see here. And all the buildings that you see here are uh, created in the way I just explained. So we used city Gmail, we sought for the specific types of lines we needed and created 3D buildings with actual roof shapes from that. And what to me is specifically interesting or we're really proud of is the, the round uh, roof shapes that you can see on top of the train station. Then there's also some water boards we are in active uh, contact with. What you can see here is a 3D visualization of a, a water measurement. Um, and you can see that uh, also in the profile that there's a lot of different height information that's incorporated in this model. And uh, this is a lot of data and we're, we were just really glad to see that our software could, could take this. And uh, you can see also in this uh, example that it, the 3D model is really, really, truly based on triangulation and a lot of uh, computation to uh, attempt to make this a watertight model. There's still a lot of work to be done, uh, but focusing on this reliable collection and ed editing within our BGT application, we think we can do a lot of interesting things with Prism. Um, we also want to include some topolo topological checks in 3D, but this is something we're still working on. Um, and the models are uh, only complete if we include all the surroundings, also the buildings, but also the civil engineering works like bridges and tunnels. We want the visualization to be clear. It doesn't have to be pretty or shiny uh, as long as it's correct. And then we want to be able to export all these uh, correct 3D models. Um, we've already come a long way, but there's still a lot of work to be done. And it's a really interesting process to be a part of. Uh, what I want to conclude with is that in uh, these interesting times, uh, Sveco is still actively searching for new employees and you're very welcome to join us within the research we're doing for uh, three, incorporating 3D in these base registrations, because not only us, but also our colleagues are uh, really working on this since the focus is more and more on correct and complete full data. So not only in 2D, but also in 3D. Also, we're right now developing a web application for the BGT instead of just a desktop application we have right now. So if you would be interested in some of this or you would just like some more information, you can feel free to contact me or ask more questions about it. Ah, uh, check. Oh, this is a very nice presentation by Sweco. Uh, we have uh, Fanny Streyer uh, in the room, also a geometric graduate, and uh, she can answer the questions uh, that are uh, raised by uh, Lawrence for Rijssel. The first question is, can this 3D model also be exported as TIN in an open format to be used for further analysis, especially the bridges and urban caves? Fanny, what do you think? Well, I think that an export functionality is really, really important. Um, and the first export we made is actually very, uh, a very basic format that just shows the vertices of the model. Um, we're also trying to work on a city GML export because a lot of our clients think that's very, very, very important. We also know that the, the format is so complex that we do not prefer this. Of course, we've also talked about a city JSON export because, well, we worked with the creators of city JSON. But we really want to expand this functionality because we think it's very important as our goal is to create really reliable data. Super. Now we have an, uh, an, well, not a other question in my lines, but a question by uh, Hugo Ledoux. Um, mm -hmm. The building on the pillars, was it created automatically from Bach, BGT, AHA, N3? Or did you do it uh, manually? Uh, what was created automatically was the footprint from BGT because it's already there and uh, we added the bug also automatically. The only things we had uh, to add manually were the uh, in between. Um, but with the, the 
points we already have in place, uh, a surveyor could go outside, just measure a few of these points, which is very easy for them. And then we would automatically have that in our software and then it could be automatically created. There you are. And then Dong Liang Peng asked this question, why is there a dense triangulation in the river? I think it's unnecessarily increases the amount of data. Can you do it uh, out? I truly totally agree. <laughs> what happened here for this specific river, we got a measurement from a water board and uh, that measurement just contained a lot and a lot and a lot of points. What we wanted to do is simply use this measurement, this data to create this 3D model for the river. Of course, before uh, uh, really storing it and exporting it, we would really thin out this data. Okay, very good. Then a question for myself, and that's the last question for this uh, part of the program. Uh, if you're looking at the, the videos we just had by our students, uh, especially the one of the, the Waterschapshuis, uh, is that research or the research results is that valuable for your uh, data product? Um, it could be valuable. Uh, most interesting for us is actually uh, getting more reliable data as the basis for what we're creating. Um, and in that sense, there could be different kind of ways where it could be very useful to, to help us actually add that and enrich uh, what we've done. So, yeah. yeah. A lot fill of the holes. what yeah. we do. Yeah, fill the holes of what's known so far. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, there is a, a, a grass machine mowing the grass uh, just in, well, I'm not uh, going to bother with you, uh, but what are you uh, about this? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Fanny. Uh, if you want to join uh, Fanny in the, in the Sweco Discord, uh, then please uh, join her there. She will be there hopefully for the rest of the day. Maybe, yeah, very good. Uh, thank you very much. Then we continue the program with a break. Yes, we can take a coffee and go to the restroom, etc. And we will be back at uh, five uh, minutes before, uh, uh, no, at three o'clock uh, exactly, uh, with 3D noise uh, uh, simulation based on advanced input data using automatically generated TINs. Uh, that's the group uh, that's working on the project by RAVM and Rijkswaterstaat. So we will, we will be back at uh, three o'clock. Thank you very much.